Hello everyone, this video is about change management. The learning objective for this video is as follows. After watching, students should be able to describe several techniques for change management, which means convincing the people to accept the new system. If we're honest, we'll admit that the hardest part of implementing a new system usually isn't the technical aspect. The hard part is making sure the system does what the user thinks it should do and convincing the user that they should actually implement that system in their daily work plan. It makes sense that a lot of time there's some resistance to change in organizations. Even changes that benefit an organization as a whole often do not necessarily benefit each individual within that organization. Individual and organizational goals might not always align. For example, I remember a time when I was working as a consultant where we implemented a new system to improve the number of clients and customers we would have as a consulting firm. As part of this change, I had to change the way I worked with clients and take more of a sales approach and ask them for referrals for other people. Now, sales is not my strong suit, and it was a change that was hard for me to make. Even though it was a benefit to the organization, it was hard for me as an individual. People at any level could resist change, not only entry-level workers, but also middle management whose power structure might change as a result of a new system being implemented. Further, adapting to new processes requires effort, for which there might be no additional compensation. In other words, even if an individual understands the benefit of the new system, the work to learn and train and transition to that new system is a big cost. In order to overcome some of these barriers, here are four best practices that organizations should use to address change management. First, revise management policies. Second, assess costs and benefit models of potential adopters. Third, motivate the adoption. And fourth, enable people to adopt through training. Let's talk about each of these in more detail. First, revising management policies. No computer system will be successfully adopted unless management policies support its adoption. If the leaders of the organization are not on board with the new system, then it's highly unlikely that any other employee in the organization will be excited to make the change. Here are several tools that management can implement to support adoption. First, adapt standard operating procedures, or SOPs. Each organization has standard operating procedures. Some are formal and some are informal. However, the SOPs are documented in the organization. The implementation of a new system will require some changes to those procedures, and management should take the time to address this issue. Second, management needs to adapt measurements and rewards. A lot of times a new system will change the way that work is done. For example, I mentioned as a consultant, a new system resulted in me having to ask for more referrals. What management in this case should have done is address any incentives that would be provided for a new type of work that is required for the employees. Finally, management needs to allocate resources to support the adoption of a new system, including training, support, and so on. These resources and changes to SOPs and measurements and rewards both directly support the adoption and also are symbolic in that they signal to employees that management really cares about adopting this new system and that it's something important to the organization. The second main step of change management is to assess the costs and benefits of change for various users. The costs and benefits are not the same for everyone in the organization. Costs and benefits can include both the new system as well as the cost of transitioning to that system. One thing that is really important to understand in this step is that the certainty of the costs and benefits are perceptions of employees. The perceptions of costs and benefits are just as important as the actual costs and benefits. Analysts should assess the costs and benefits of all potential users of the system to understand which employees are most likely to resist the change. Third, you need to come up with some strategies to motivate adoption. In this comic, the pointy-haired boss hires a director of change management to help motivate the employees to accept new changes. While Dilbert, even though he's being cynical, has a point that change is more important than hiring someone to motivate the employees, there is an underlying truth here that there needs to be someone in the organization who is championing the change and motivating other employees to accept it as well. There are two main types of motivation strategies, informational and political. Informational aims to convince adopters that change is necessary through clear and convincing evidence. Use reports or other numerical evidence to show the employees how the change will benefit the organization and that specific employee if possible. As I mentioned before, change is not only about the actual costs and benefits, but also the perceived costs and benefits. Therefore, a political strategy is also necessary in many cases. A political strategy uses organizational power to motivate change. 
A political strategy could be to provide incentives for acceptance of the new system, or even punishment for not accepting the new system. It could also include even the way that memos or emails about the new system are framed, using a positive attitude to promote positivity around the new system. It's important to understand the various types of potential users of a system. In most cases, potential adopters generally are 20 to 30 percent ready adopters. These are the people who already from the get-go understand the need and the benefit of the new system and are ready to jump on board. At the same time, there's usually the same number of resistant adopters, people who drag their feet no matter what you tell them that really do not want to change. The largest group of potential adopters are the reluctant adopters. These are people who are somewhat apathetic and tend to go with the flow. If you enlist the ready adopters to influence the reluctant adopters, you're more likely to have success in your system. Strategies should focus on supporting and encouraging those ready adopters and helping them win those reluctant adopters. In all reality, a lot of times you just have to ignore the resistant adopters, or at least don't spend too much effort trying to convince someone who simply is not going to change their mind about the new system. The fourth best practice in change management is training. Even though we've mentioned several times that we need to design our system so that users can just sit down and use it and figure it out, don't assume that they will just figure it out. Offer training. Again, this signals that management really cares about the project and wants to help the new employees learn to use the new system. One common mistake in training about new systems is that IT specialists tend to focus training around system features. However, you should instead focus on helping users accomplish their tasks. Make training not about the computer or the system, but about people's daily work lives and how they are affected by it. Match the type of training to your resources and the type of learners you have. Training could include traditional classroom training, one-on-one -on -one training, or computer-based training. Computer-based training is more expensive upfront to develop, but if you're in a large organization, it might be worth it 